Who would have thought that he would spend ten whole years to get to the Palace of the Night? System Prompt Domain of Eternal Darkness, Palace of Eternal Night, Last Chapter of Despair, Event Active for 6 hours 54 minutes. An experienced player with level 180 stood in front of the Lord of Despair Despair, and they both prepared to strike. The player said that when he kills him, he will receive a legendary reward. He saw that sparks were gathering in the dragon's mouth and said that he had not even started yet, after which the dragon released a bright flame at him and the system windows reported that the spike skill was being used, which deals a direct blow, causing 14,000 units of damage, reduces the enemy's defense by 20% for 5 seconds. The player jumped up and said it was his turn. He jumped on the dragon and plunged the dagger into its body. He said that the strongest boss is nothing special. The system window reported that the Lord of Despair had entered a critical state. The player was surprised, he is already moving to the next phase. The dragon collected energy in its mouth and the system window reported that the Lord of Despair had entered a berserk state. The player began to defend himself and thought that the boss had crazy damage, one careless move and he would die instantly. The dragon shot sparks at him and he asked, is he attacking again? Doesn't the dragon's breath really have a cooldown? Does he use it all the time? This is a good chance, he should take advantage of it. He used the ghost skill, which allows him to quickly move forward a certain distance, and the next attack deals 100% critical damage. He quickly circled around the dragon's body and thought that there were many grievances between him and the Lord of Despair. He used the decapitating storm skill, which creates a storm that deals 20,000 damage, and if the target's health is below 5%, it instantly kills the target. The player attacked and said that he would personally put an end to this. He dealt numerous blows to the dragon and the system reported that the Lord of Despair Despair was defeated. The system congratulates him on receiving the exclusive server achievement Death of the Lord, he receives the Seed of Despair reward. The quest will be closed in 60 seconds. A player named Wang Yan looked at the monitor in disbelief and said that he had finally done it. After 10 whole years of playing, he finally defeated the desperate overlord before the server closed. They even gave him an exclusive reward, but after the game server was closed, it was useless. Suddenly sparks started coming from the monitor and he was surprised, what kind of light was that? He gets really exhausted playing this all night and seems to be hallucinating. A system prompt appeared on the monitor stating that the server would restart in 3 seconds. 3 seconds passed and he asked, shouldn't the server have closed? Why is it restarting? He looked outside and thought, what's going on? What he saw below surprised him greatly. There were cracks all over the ground, from which a bunch of red eyes peered out. Monsters came out of the ground and people began to run away from them in panic, but the monsters easily killed them and began to create chaos. Wang Yan looked at it and said that these were monsters from the game. What's going on? Is this an illusion? Suddenly a system alert appeared in front of him, informing him that Eternal Darkness had successfully rebooted. A large energy explosion occurred on the street from which people and the monster were running away. The system window reported that data initialization has been completed. A huge monster emerged from a huge energy explosion. The system window reported that the system connection was successful. Wang Yan was surprised, is this the Darkness Eternal game system? While he was standing at home, monsters were burning people alive. He asked, restart the game, connect to reality. If the truth happened, his mom and dad. Suddenly a call came on his phone from his dad and he asked, is it his dad calling? Suddenly a goblin appeared outside the window, broke it and broke into his apartment. The system window reported that this was a second level goblin warrior. Wang Yan gritted his teeth and thought about his phone. Games are games, and reality is reality, monsters should only remain in the game, right? They broke in and destroyed everything for no reason, it's unforgivable. Let them get out of here. He wanted to use the shadow skill, but the system window said that the skill was not activated and he asked, are the skills not working? Is he not level enough? The goblin attacked him, but he blocked the blow and thought that even though he couldn't use skills, he still had the basic characteristics of an assassin. And this means that the goblin is finished. They attacked each other, but Wang Yan was the first to strike and cut the goblin into pieces. The system window reported that he had received 10 units of experience. His level had been raised to level 2, and he had gained dagger mastery. Wang Yan looked at his knife and said that in the real world there are worse weapons. In order to survive, he needs to find something suitable. He looked outside and said that there was a monster that always dropped the novice assassin armor needed for survival. But first of all, he needs to quickly find his mom and dad. The rules of this world may begin to change. The city was reduced to ruins, and among these ruins was a lone level 5 goblin scout. Suddenly a sharp knife stuck into the goblin's head and the system window informed Wang Yan that his level had been raised to 4, a new skill cold poison had been unlocked. He looked at the goblin's weapon and said, although it is a bad weapon, it is still better than a kitchen knife. He looked at his stats and said that his level up rate isn't that high right now. Suddenly someone appeared behind him and the system window reported that this was a level 8 troll scout. 
Wang Yan looked at the huge monster and said that killing it was only a matter of time, even with such a gap in levels. Suddenly another monster appeared behind him and he turned around. The system window reported that this was a level 10 elite troll. Wang Yan said that the scout and elite troll, the game master overestimated him too much. Well, if they want to taste his bones, then they will have to be more powerful. The monsters immediately attacked him and he said that he couldn't deal with two at the same time, he needed to kill them one by one. The troll raised his weapon over him and Wang Yan said that now is the time. Cold poison is a skill that, after hitting a target, imposes a passive effect of losing blood on the enemy by 1% of health points per second for 10 seconds. This effect can stack up to 5 times, after the skill ends, the target's blood explodes. He pounced on the troll and dealt it one blow, then he dealt another blow. He dodged the attack and struck a third blow, then a fourth, after which he asked, are they not keeping up with him? He delivered the final fifth blow and told the monster to explode. A powerful energy wave passed from the troll, which threw Wang Yan away. He is among the rubble and said he underestimated the force of the explosion. With his current stamina, he is so weak that he cannot use the skill yet. The troll approached him and he asked if he would really die from the clutches of a monster. He pulled himself together and said that he didn't want this. The system window reported that the Seed of Despair was activated. The Lord of Despair begins to appear, after which a dragon appeared in front of him, who told him that he was lucky to defeat him and so he gives him his special gift. He will show him his true strength the next time they meet. The system reported that a new profession necromancer had been opened. He received Ghost Fire, the skill of controlling the dead, the special skill Judgment, the Undead Zone and the Undead Talent, Tear. Undead Zone creates a barrier surrounding the necromancer within a radius of several meters. This controls the entire Undead Zone at the will of the necromancer. This slowly restores health in the Undead Zone and also reduces the duration of enemy skills by half. He can use Control Dead for free. The system window reported that two souls were detected in the undead zone. He wants to awaken the souls and control them. Wang Yan agreed and the system window reported that with the help of the undead talent. Tier, the necromancer gives the undead a large damage bonus, and the attacks of the undead warriors open the enemy's wounds and apply the effect of severe injury. The undead zone is successfully controlled, he needs to choose a target for attack. He chose the troll and the dead monsters attacked him. Blood sprayed from the troll's mouth and Wang Yan said that this was a great opportunity. He stabbed the dagger into the troll's chest and told him to burn in hell, after which he pulled the dagger out of the monster's body and knocked it to the ground. He said that he had finally done it, after which the system window reported that the first kill of an elite enemy had been made. He received the title Pioneer, he received 100 experience and his level increased to 10. As a reward, he receives 10 pieces of low-level products. He received a new skill ghost and continuous strikes. He looked at the skeletons and the system window reported that souls had been detected that he could take control of, did he want to activate the skill to control the dead. With the support of the dead skill, the necromancer receives a 50% chance of exchanging the soul of an enemy he has killed for an undead warrior that he can control. He used the control the dead skill on the skeleton and asked, was it successful this time? He needs to learn a little about it first. The system window reported that the skill's duration had expired, zero seconds remained. Suddenly he heard a noise from the side and saw a huge cyclops peeking out from around the corner. He said that if he was caught by a level 20 cyclops, he would be in big trouble, so it was time for him to escape from here. The system window reported that the hidden fire class of the desperate overlord can communicate with the dead, those who awaken the fire can become necromancers. With this class, he can summon powerful dead ones, and ghostly fire can also enhance the necromancer's skills. He ran and thought, is this a hidden class? He had been playing for 10 years and had never heard of the necromancer class before. The system window reported that he had killed 4 monsters, he had collected 4 ghostly lights. He asked, ghost fire, it can summon undead warriors. This seems to conflict with his current class settings. But if he shows this ability to others, he will be feared, so he needs to hide it until he becomes stronger. The system window informed him that in order to unlock other skills he needed a sufficient amount of phantom fire. To unlock the power of the dead he needs three ghostly lights. Dominate the undead costs three ghost fires, undead zone and undead gate need 30 ghost fires, 10 ghost fires to use it. Undead territory requires 1000 ghost lights and 1000 ghost lights to use. To awaken talents, you need 40,000 ghost lights and 1000 to use. He said that the amount of ghost fire determines the limit of his power, which is unfortunate but logical. How much does he need to collect this ghostly fire? He threw that thought aside and said that he needed to go home first. Suddenly, from the side, he heard a child crying. A little girl stood in the middle of the street and cried loudly, looking for her mother. Wang Yan saw that a huge cyclops was standing behind the girl and rushed forward asking where her parents were. The cyclops attacked, but Wang Yan managed to save the girl in time and said that it was close. Cyclops must not understand that he did it. 
They are the dumbest of the race of giants. He forgot that the Cyclops is cannon fodder among the giants, but they also have their own survival abilities. The tracking eye continues to track the target until it dies. One-eyed hunter is a Cyclops tracking skill. With the help of the eye the Cyclops attacks the strongest enemy within sight, chases him and kills him, he begins to strike until the target dies. He handed the girl to the man and said that he was leaving her to him. Let them leave quickly. The man told him that it was very dangerous there. Wang Yan stood in front of the Cyclops and the horde of goblins and the man said that the monsters are approaching, let them run quickly. Wang Yan rushed forward and told them to come here. He used the ghost skill and easily cut down the small goblins. As he expected, the ghost skill is perfect for an assassin. He told the Cyclops that his goblin minions were cowards. The goblins were afraid of their impending death and other players attacked the Cyclops, saying that this was a great opportunity. Now they will kill the Cyclops. But suddenly the Cyclops waved his weapon and they asked what kind of skill this was. They fell to the ground and one of them asked, did they still fail? It will be difficult for them to find another opportunity to attack. Wang Yan asked, another one. They are just toys for the Cyclops. He attacked the Cyclops and said that they gave him the opportunity. Blue blood sprayed out from the Cyclops and a squad of players began to rise from the ground. The girl picked up the commander and asked if he was okay. The guy asked, did he see someone hurt the Cyclops? The other guy asked who it was. One of them said to look ahead and the commander said that it was incredible, someone could fight a Cyclops alone. They began to watch as Wang Yan expertly attacked the Cyclops. Wang Yan thought that defense is one of the high characteristics of the giant race, with a difference of 10 levels, it is almost impossible to cause damage, apparently he only needs to hit the weak points. The Cyclops swung, but Wang Yan jumped and the girl asked in admiration, is he a professional assassin? The guy replied, maybe he is an assassin, but why is there such a big difference? They continued to watch their fight and scream for him to kill this Cyclops. Cyclops noticed them and they fell silent. Wang Yan said that it was better for them not to interfere, let them run away quickly. They didn't listen to him and ran away, saying that they were leaving the Cyclops to him. Cyclops and Wang Yan froze in anticipation. But Cyclops decided to act first and accumulated powerful energy in his mouth. Wang Yan said that a flock of sheep will not harm a wolf, but a wolf alone will be so bold that it can fight a lion. He can try his new continuous hitting skill, he will give them a surprise. He began to strike the monster numerous and quickly using the continuous strike skill, which causes enormous damage by delivering continuous strikes, each strike dealing a certain amount of damage that has no size limit. Cyclops attacked him using the explosive strike skill, with this skill Cyclops holds the mace tightly and deals 200% damage in an area, throwing the player back. Wang Yan said that it was his turn now. He has already become the target of the one-eyed hunter, it might just let go. He struck the Cyclops with blows and said that now the moment has come. He dealt a fifth blow to the Cyclops and the effect of the cold poison skill was activated. An explosion occurred and the dead Wang Yan warriors attacked the Cyclops, after which the system window reported that he had defeated the Cyclops, he received the title Fearless. The owner of this title receives immunity to any fear skill. During a battle with a representative of Times and Giants, the enemy's defense is reduced by 25%. The Undead Zone is a special place for necromancers, filled with the aura of death. This is a special place where necromancers can store undead warriors. Only necromancers and undead warriors can enter this area. He looked around and thought, should the people have already left? Then he will try this ability. He summoned an undead gate to absorb the souls of his enemies. There is a 50% chance of turning an undead warrior and a 50% chance of moving into an undead zone. There is a 100% chance of turning an undead warrior upon first use. He closed the gate of the undead and wondered if only he could enter. He said it was wonderful. He did not notice that monsters had appeared behind him, but some guy called out to him in time and he turned around. He asked what was going on. Where did he come from here? The guy attacked the monsters and Wang Yan saw his characteristics. He's a level 5 mage fighting two level 7 trolls with a street lamp. Is he really a magician? He looks more like a berserker. The magician scattered all the monsters and Wang Yan said that it seems that he has become stronger. It's so cool to fight without skills. The guy said it was a great job. Wang Yan told him that he was also a professional. He was able to deal with two trolls with a lantern in his hands. This is amazing. The guy said that the poor Taoist was born with brute strength and he would win any prize. Suddenly Wang Yan noticed something to the side and looked there. He saw many monsters and the system window reported that unknown creatures had appeared. The danger level increases, the barrier is destroyed, and a restoration attempt begins. The Lord of Despair Despair has descended to Earth. Eternal darkness is downloaded onto the Earth, the data census begins. 13% loaded, the creation of eternal darkness is loading. Wang Yan called out to Despair and said that it was him. The system window advised them to immediately move to the safe zone. The Taoist asked what is this. Wang Yan grabbed him by the clothes and said that they had better go, they couldn't handle him. 
The guy asked, isn't that too much? The monsters attacked them and Wang Yan told him to be careful. Suddenly a truck crashed into the monster and they turned around. He saw a man in the driver's seat and asked him to leave. The man waved his hand and looked at the bomb in his hands. He told them that he still had work to do and his mission was to ensure their safety. Let them live happily. The truck exploded and Wang Yan called out to him worriedly, but they collected their thoughts and ran away from the explosion. The Taoist told him that he had a plan. He grabbed him by the arm and began to spin him around. Wang Yan asked what he was doing. The Taoist let go of his hand and threw him aside, saying that let him go and he'll figure it out himself. He saw Wang Yan flying straight towards the explosion and said that he accidentally turned 180 degrees. 360 degrees is in front of him and 180 behind him. Looks like he screwed up again. He said that now he will save him. Wang Yan fell down and shouted that he was an idiot. Now all he can do is try to use his skill. He opened the gate of death and the system window reported that the gate of death is open. Ten ghostly lights are spent for each use. A death gate appeared under Wang Yan and the system window reported that the undead field is a special land for the undead where the souls of the dead rest. The will of this special place is under the control of the necromancer and all the souls in the undead field are under his control. Wang Yan said that ordinary fog can hide the gates of death. He called the Cyclops and the huge skeleton said that he was at his service. Wang Yan landed on the Cyclops' bony hand and told him to get ready. Cyclops used an explosive blow and pushed Wang Yan forward. He flew forward and said that it was dangerous, it's good that he got out. The system window reported that the necromancer had left the gate of death, the maximum time had been exceeded, the gate of death was closed. The Taoist saw Wang Yan flying and said that he had made it out. How did he do it? He asked him to wait and ran after him. Wang Yan flew towards Jia Hua department store and said that he had flown so far. He stuck the dagger into the window and pierced it with his body. He landed inside the room, then shook himself off the debris and said that it was relatively safe here, but why did he feel like he had forgotten something? Suddenly the Taoist broke the window and flew into the room. Wang Yan thought, where did he come from here? He asked how he got here. The Taoist shook himself off the splinters and replied that he just jumped in here. Wang Yan said that this is the third floor. Suddenly a monster appeared outside the window and Wang Yan raised his finger to his lips and said to be quiet. The Taoist asked in a whisper, where are they going now? It's too dangerous outside. Wang Yan replied that they needed to get into the basement. This building was converted from a shelter, so it should be safe there. He crawled forward and said that they would go through the emergency entrance. The Taoist agreed and said that then he would be the first. They went downstairs and threw a soda can to distract the goblins. The monsters started playing with the jar and Wang Yan said that they need to act. The two of them killed the goblins and the Taoist dealt the final blow to the goblin's head. He said it was strange why there were no other monsters here, only these green gnomes. Wang Yan came down the stairs and said that these are goblins, compared to other monsters, they are similar in size to them. But it's really strange that they didn't meet anyone else. For safety reasons, they better hide if they stumble upon a monster above level 50, then they are finished. They reached the huge doors and Wang Yan said that it should be here. The Taoist examined the doors and said that it seemed that one could hide here. They started pushing the door and he asked why the iron door was so heavy. Wang Yan told him to put in more effort, after which they opened the door and went inside. At this time, in another place, the military was observing the entire situation. The soldier called out to the commander and said that the interference barrier lasted 12 hours and disappeared. All the satellites stopped working, their repair teams had already set off to repair the communication network. According to information received from outside the base, the situation is not very optimistic, the problem is comparable to a world war. The commander slammed his fist on the railing and asked, is there any connection? This barrier kept them at the base for 12 hours. Let him give the order. All troops need to expect mobilization. They need to strengthen their territories as soon as possible. Let them bring military tents from warehouses and provide everyone with temporary housing. The soldier asked if there was enough space at the base. Their area is home to about 100 million people. The commander replied that this should be enough. Let them take everything from Warehouse 81. The soldier said that Warehouse 81 stores all the resources that they have collected for 50 years for emergencies such as war. The commander said that all this belongs to the citizens, so it should be used for their benefit. If you don't use it now, then when? Let him write the order, and he will sign everything. The soldier saluted the commander and obeyed the order. The commander looked at the statistics on the big screen and wondered what they were dealing with this time. At this time, in the shelter, Wang Yan found the phone and said that it was difficult for him to get it. He didn't expect a warning to appear on the lock screen. It seems to him that the noise outside has died down. A whole day had passed, the monsters should have disappeared. He walked past the people and looked out of the shelter. He looked around and said that this was somehow strange. The street is too quiet and clean, not a trace of blood, not a single corpse.
he doesn't remember there being any ghouls or monsters that eat corpses. Suddenly he saw a huge building in front of him and asked, wasn't there a gym here? This must be the nest of the lizard people, has it already changed? He stood in front of the one horn palace and said that it is not surprising that there are no monsters, except for a couple of wild ones, the rest hid in the nest. Suddenly military helicopters appeared in the sky and the military used loudspeakers to tell all survivors who could walk to go to the airport immediately. The rescue plane will arrive soon, so let them head to the airport. The military repeated the warning again and Wang Yan turned around. He saw the military running forward. One of them said that each squad takes over one zone. Let them search carefully, they need to get an infrared device and not miss anything. If they meet a monster, they should not wait for orders and kill them immediately. The military began to pull people out from under the rubble and someone called a doctor, saying, the old man broke something, so he needs first aid. The military doctor replied that he would come now. He needs to finish with the wounded man first. One of the military men approached Wang Yan and said that he was almost unharmed, so let him go to the airport on his own and wait for the rescue plane. Wang Yan looked at the red rift in the sky and told Despair that if yesterday he declared war on them, then here is their answer to him. He went into the military tent and the military man asked, are you sure he won't fly? Wang Yan replied that it was okay, he could protect himself. The soldier said that he had the highest level of all the people he had met so far. Although he doesn't know what the level above his head means, the bigger the better, isn't it? He handed him the walkie-talkie and said if he wanted to go out on his own to find his parents, then let him take the walkie-talkie so he could contact them. If he can find his parents, then have him use the walkie-talkie to contact them and they will send someone to pick them up. Wang Yan thanked him and examined the walkie-talkie, after which he went outside and said that the walkie-talkie was easy to use so it would not be difficult for him to contact them. He went to the truck and thought, now, probably, the Taoist and the others are ready to fly away, but he does not know where they will be taken. He put the boxes in the truck, he took food for five or six days, usually the journey takes only six hours. He wonders how long it will take now. He set off and stopped for the night in the evening, after which he sat down by the fire and began to fry food. He drove a little in the evening, judging by the first part, all the roads are destroyed, he has no navigation, he only has a paper map. If this continues, then a five-day supply of food will not be enough for him. Suddenly he saw a drop in front of him and thought, has it started to rain? He raised his head up and saw a monster above him, drooling. The monster said it was delicious food. Wang Yan asked, is this a shadow draconian? He had to face this vile creature. The monster rushed at him and Wang Yan threw his food into his mouth. He took out his dagger and said that for some reason it seemed to him that it was somehow different from everyone else that was in the game. The system window reported that a level 26 shadow draconian had appeared in front of him. The shadow draconian is a hunter hiding in the darkness of the night, who was expelled from the draconian clan due to unclean blood that encourages murder. He has extremely great patience. Once you attack him, he will not give up the pursuit of his victim, he likes to cruelly play with his prey, and then kill. The draconian looked up at Wang Yan and he asked, does he have any idea how difficult it was for him to start a fire without fire? And he just fell over it. He pushed the draconian away from him, but he threw a sharp needle at him and Wang Yan, dodging, said that he also hit a trump card. He was lucky that he didn't throw dragon fruit. The draconian said that he missed human flesh so much. Wang Yan replied that he didn't miss him at all. While they were exchanging words, the fire began to spread to the forest. The draconian pounced on Wang Yan and said that he was his snack. Wang Yan told him to go to hell, and after that they began to fight. Wang Yan said that he is strong, shadow draconians have strong scales. But it doesn't matter, he will attack again. He repelled his blows and said that something was wrong here. He begins to crowd him. The fire began to spread further through the forest and the draconian went crazy at the sight of the food in front of him. Wang Yan parried his blow and asked, is he out of his mind from hunger? He was at a disadvantage in the first round, but it doesn't matter because he will be driving the second time. He opened the gates of the dead and said that they are continuing the second round. The system window reported that the shadow draconian was using the innate hunter skill hunter instinct, which helps him improve his sense of danger. The draconian got scared and said that he needed to run away. He rushed away into the forest and Wang Yan asked, did he think of running away? Nothing will work out for him. A one-eyed monster appeared from the gate and Wang Yan ordered him to follow the draconian. The draconian continued to run and said that that person is dangerous, he is definitely an unusual person. He looked back and was greatly surprised when the cyclops attacked him. The system window reported that the one-eyed one had placed a tracking mark on the shadow draconian. An eye appeared above the draconian and he asked the cyclops why he was here. How did he become a human dog? Wang Yan cut the draconian's body and asked, did he call him a dog? The one-eyed man is his general. Who would have thought that the nutritional effect of the kingdom of the dead was so good? The one-eyed man not only grew up, but also donned armor. The system window reported that the shadow draconian had burst into bloody sorrow. 
Blood Sorrow is a draconian skill where when a shadow draconian finds itself in a dangerous situation, it will burn a small amount of its own blood to achieve a quantum leap in strength and speed for a limited time. This consumes 20% pure dragon blood, increasing speed and strength by 200%. The maximum health of the draconian is reduced by 20% after the effect of the bloody sorrow ends. The shadow draconian enters a short-term state of bleeding. His body caught fire and he said he had to run. The use of blood sorrow is limited. Wang Yan watched the dragon can climb up the cliff in fear and thought, is he that scary? And he activated blood sorrow so early. It's a bit unexpected, but he has a plan B. The draconian climbed onto the rock and said that he had made it out. But Wang Yan's warriors were waiting for him at the top and attacked him. The troll said that he had finally waited for him, as expected from his highness. The draconian asked, are they from the troll clan from the ice field of the boundless sea? Did they attack him? That man is much scarier than he thought. He needs to escape quickly. He cut off their heads and told them not to disturb him. His shadow decapitator skill allows him to swing a pair of shadow blades and deal 100% critical damage. When the victim's health falls below 5%, the decapitation effect is triggered. And in the blood mourn state, decapitating shadow blades deal 200% critical damage. When the victim's health drops below 10%, the decapitation effect is triggered. The draconian felt that they grabbed his legs and said that this was absolutely impossible. He asked them to let him go and a cyclops appeared behind him and attacked him. Purple blood sprayed from the draconian's mouth and he screamed in pain. The cyclops attacked the draconian again and he, landing on the ground, thought what kind of monster he was. He looked up and saw him standing surrounded by monsters. Wang Yan said that he is a man, the king of hell. The draconian thought that he might not be able to kill the trolls and giants, but he could. Wang Yan said that the effect of the bloody tribulation was almost over, if he didn't try again, then there wouldn't be another chance. The draconian rushed to attack and Wang Yan used the cold poison skill. The system window reported that the effect of bloody sorrow had ended and the effect of the laceration had been activated. Wang Yan dealt four blows to the monster and the system windows reported that due to the bloody wound, the strength and speed of the draconian were reduced by 50%. Wang Yan delivered the final fifth blow to his arm, immediately after which the draconian realized and cut off his arm. Wang Yan was very surprised by this and asked, can he do that? The draconian's hand exploded and he said that victory was his. The draconian looked at the explosion and the system window reported that the gates of the undead had opened. Wang Yan came out of the gate and said that he was very smart since he decided to escape with his hand cut off and he almost screwed up. He thought, if not for the gates of the dead, he would have been torn apart, he spent 10 more ghostly lights. If he doesn't turn him into an undead warrior after the battle is over, his losses will be colossal. The draconian attacked him and wished him death. But Wang Yan plunged a dagger into his neck and dealt another blow to his body. The system window reported that he received inferior quality magic ore and a shadow blade. Wang Yan said that he will finally change weapons. The bone blade was almost worn out. He used the undead control skill on the draconian and thought that this time he should succeed. He ordered the dead draconian to obey him. The draconian's flesh disappeared and Wang Yan thought that the original state was still in skeleton form. After being in the undead dimension, he too will be able to acquire his own flesh and armor like the one-eyed one. He feels from it the grace of the Tibetan sword Ju and Ju. The draconian knelt before his master and the inscription Ju and Ju appeared above his head. Wang Yan thought, has his name changed? The system window reported that he had given the true name to the draconian. Now the undead warrior is under his complete control, and the shadow draconian skill Bloody Sorrow is acquired. Wang Yan thought, is there any benefit to changing the name? Will this work on others too? He told the monsters to approach one by one and name the one-eyed one a lie, now he is like an ancient general. The system window reported that he had given the cyclops a name and received the tracking eye skill. Wang Yan said that the elite troll would be called Zia Luki, and the scout troll would be called Meng Fen. The system window reported that he had secured their absolute loyalty and received 1% of the strength of the elite troll and the scout troll. Wang Yan was disappointed, he only received 1%. It looks like he can only get stats from undead warriors without skills if he gives them a name. Cyclops and the trolls laughed and Wang Yan asked why they were giggling. Let them immediately put out the fire, if the forest burns, he will give them such a scolding. He started to spell goblins and thought he felt like a slime. The system window reported that he had given the true name to the goblins and secured their loyalty. In the morning he arrived at his destination and sat down on a tree to explore the area. Below he saw monsters and wondered where all the villagers were. He looked out the window of one of the houses and noticed that the room was clean, he saw no signs of a struggle. He called someone, but the number was unavailable. He remembered that the connection had not been restored. The absence of signs of a struggle means that there was no clash, but there must be at least some traces of where the people went. They couldn't fly into the sky or fall into the ground. Still, there must be a trace, he just didn't notice it. 
Suddenly he saw something below and thought, how could he forget about this place? There was a monument on the ground in honor of the tunnel war that took place in 1951. At this time, there were survivors in the tunnel. The guy asked, are they going back to Tambo supermarket? The other guy said that Tambo's house is already empty. The old man asked each family for the amount of supplies and their location, after which they would move between houses and look for food. The guy asked, will they move between houses? The girl asked, isn't it dangerous? The other guy replied that it was so dangerous, otherwise the four of them wouldn't have gone. They looked out of the tunnel and saw Wang Yan killing the monster. They hid in a tunnel and the guy asked what that just happened. The other guy replied that he had no idea. The girl covered her ears with her hands and said that she was scared. The guy with the glasses said they need to go back. The guy took out a sword and said that he would take another look, if something happens to him, then let them immediately return and destroy the passage. Another guy's friend saw Wang Yan rushing at them and warned Brother Tao about it. The guy pulled out a sword and told them to leave. Wang Yan moved his sword away from him and asked, isn't this blade a relic? This can still be used. The guy recognized Brother Yan and others, coming out of the tunnel and asked how he managed to return. The girl rushed into her brother's arms and Wang Yan told Wang King to let him go, otherwise she would strangle him. He asked what happened to his parents. They are all right. The guy replied that the third uncle and third aunt were fine, no one was hurt, the tunnels were safe, but they were very worried about him. Wang Yan noticed that they also received classes, he asked, but why did they come out? They replied that there were almost no supplies left in the tunnel, so they went to collect it. Wang Yan asked why them. Where are the other players? They all reached the 10th level and Wang King, with the magician class, said that they had become stronger. Wang Hai with the archer class said that they were the only ones who received classes in the entire village. Wang Chong with the shield class said that they even killed an orc together. Wang Tao with the warrior class just stood there and smiled. He said that he, too, was still perplexed as to why only the four of them received classes. The only thing they have in common is this game of eternal darkness. Wang Yan asked, do they know about this game? Wang Chong said that they all played it except for Wang King. After all, she only did cosplay, but the others didn't know about this game. Wang Yan said that it turns out that all the players are people who are related to eternal darkness. He asked how they killed that orc soldier. Wang Tao replied that they lured him into a septic tank and drowned him. Wang Yan said it was disgusting. Let them leave the gathering of supplies to him. Wang Tao asked him to let him go with him, he could stand up for himself. Wang Yan agreed and said that everyone else should go back to the tunnel. They agreed and Wang Yan and Wang Tao went out in search of food. Wang Yan said that he noticed that there were no signs of fighting in the village, what is the reason for this? Wang Tao replied that at dawn, grandfather was out for a walk and noticed a group of orcs approaching, after which he returned and broadcast over the loudspeaker for everyone to gather in the tunnel. Wang Yan said, as expected from grandpa, Wang Tao said that although it was safe there, because there was no fire, there was very little ready to eat food, so they had to go searching. He asked his brother how he managed to get through the crowd of monsters. Wang Yan asked him not to mention this, he was going to climb over the wall to hide from the patrol group of orcs, and in the end he was surrounded, so he had to finish everyone off. Wang Tao replied that it was great that he was back, otherwise they would have stumbled upon them. Wang Yan told him not to worry, as long as he's around, he'll be fine. He asked what was the situation with the orcs in the village. Wang Tao replied that at present they have managed to find out a lot, there are at least 50 or 60 orcs, walking in groups of 5 or 6 orcs. There is also a level 25 orc general among them, he is very dangerous. They almost noticed him when they watched him from afar last time. Wang Yan said thoughtfully that there is a level 25 orc general and about 60 orc soldiers. He can still cope one on one, but with a group it will be difficult for him. Suddenly they felt a shaking and Wang Tao asked what was that there. The wall that was in front of them cracked and began to break. The SUV crashed through the wall at great speed and Wang Yan and Wang Tao were surprised. The SUV crashed into a tree and the driver began to frantically start the car. The guy in the passenger seat said that he had been saying for a long time that they should stop driving around in the car. The girl in the back seat panicked and called out to the driver, Ming Yan, and told him to get out of here quickly. Ming Yan asked them to shut up and at that very second a sharp blade pierced the roof of the car. An orc looked into the gap and they screamed in fear, but Wang Yan decided to intervene and grabbed the orc by the head, dragging him along. It turns out he grabbed the orc by the ear and he started screaming in pain. Other orcs said that it hurt them to look at the captain's ear. One of them asked why they stood rooted to the spot. They need a chase. The girl looked out of the car window and said that she didn't see monsters. Ming Yan said that it seems that they ran after that person. Suddenly Wang Tao knocked on the car window and told them to follow him. At this time, the entire crowd of goblins ran after Wang Yan, who was dragging their captain. He looked around and said that there were so many of them, where did they come from? He stopped and thought that this distance would be enough. He threw the orc towards them and said that he was returning it. 
The orcs began to examine the body of their brother and ask if he was okay. One of them pointed his finger at Wang Yan and said that they would kill him. The orc swung his dagger, but Wang Yan parried the blow and used his cold poison skill. He dealt five blows and quickly ran away from the orc, after which there was an explosion and the orcs were significantly weakened. Wang Yan raised his dagger over the orc captain and greeted him. The orc asked why him again. Wang Yan cut his face and he screamed in pain, after which he summoned the draconian Ju and Ju and he rushed to the attack, saying that he will kill everyone who disrespects the master. He cut open the body of the nearest orc and said that he was coming for the rest of the orc's entrails. Wang Yan thought it was quite convenient to hide the draconian in the shadows. Suddenly an orc attacked him from the side and told him to give his brother back his life. Wang Yan parried the blow and replied that it was not he who killed his bro, why is he asking this of him? From the side came the voice of a draconian, who said that he would kill everyone. They looked at him and the draconian told everyone to die. Wang Yan told the orc that he should look for him. The orc replied that he could not cope with him. Wang Yan broke his shield and asked, since he is too tough for him, then he should go to him. The orc was surprised by his strength and two more orcs appeared behind him. They attacked him and Wang Yan said that they were attacking one after another. He used his skills and said that they were treating him like a weakling. Another orc attacked him and said that he would use his skull as an offering to his bros. But Wang Yan jumped and avoided the blow and the orc was surprised, after which Wang Yan said with a smile that he would meet them in hell. He dealt multiple blows to his body, after which another orc ran up, who said that they would kill him and avenge the captain. Wang Yan laughed and asked, can they do it? Zhu and Zhu appeared in front of them and one of the orcs told the others not to be afraid, they will avenge the captain. Immediately after this, a system window appeared, which reported that his level had been increased to 22. Wang Yan sat on a huge bag and said that all this equipment was for warriors and tanks. It's time for them to return, let Brother Tao and the others choose something for themselves. Orc teeth should be quite suitable for monks. An orc tooth is one of the main materials for making a necromancer necklace and a necromancer staff. The undead who failed to transform at the undead gate turn into ghostly fire and become food for the undead warriors of the undead dimension. Wang Yan thought that the current conversion rate was too low, but these 11 converted came out better than expected. After a while, in the tunnel, Wang Tao grabbed Ming Yan by the clothes and asked who they were and why were they stopping him from saving Yan's brother. He distracted the orcs to save the three of them. Ming Yan replied that he would go to save him, but what should they do if other orcs suddenly attacked? Or does he mean that this group of defenseless people will be able to fight back? An old man approached Wang Tao and said that Wang Yan is a self-sufficient child. Since he decided to take so many monsters with him, it means he is confident that he can escape. So he suggests just waiting. Ming Yan agreed with the old man and asked him to let him go. Suddenly Wang Yan put his hand on his head and pushed him, saying that he had just returned and was immediately met with flies, what an abomination. Ming Yan thought in surprise that he actually returned alive. Wang Yan called out to his parents and grandfather and said that he had returned. Tears appeared in his mother's eyes and his parents hugged him, saying that he had finally returned. They were so worried about him. Wang Yan said that they need not worry. Wang Tao said that Brother Yan is super strong. He pointed to a large bag and said that there must be food in this nook. He said that he would not let them down. The old man said that he only thinks about food, let him look at others, then at himself. How did he raise such a mediocrity? Wang Tao said that before going out to buy food, he praised him in every possible way, so why is he calling him a mediocrity now? The old man asked, Wang Yan was gone for two days. Night fell, Wang Yan warmed up and thought that he had everything figured out. Suddenly a voice was heard from the walkie-talkie and he thought, have the plans changed? He called out to the major and he told Wang Yan that it was him. Wang Yan said that he had already notified the village chief and they were now preparing to go to the place where the plane was supposed to land. A promise he made before. The major interrupted him and said that there was no time for that now. He asked how long has it been since he played Darkness Eternal. Wang Yan replied that it was 10 years ago. The major asked if he knew the player it's cool today. Wang Yan became excited and thought, why so suddenly? He replied that he did not know this player. He wondered why the major mentioned his ID so suddenly. He asked, is there something wrong with this man? The major replied that based on their data, they could conclude that this player most likely had something to do with worldwide gamification. Wang Yan thought, could he really be the reason? The major said that he was the only one who arrived at the Hall of Eternal Night, but they have no information about him. Yu Heng, the company that developed Darkness Eternal, became the Bone Dragon Abyss, one of the nine purgatories. It should contain information about the identities of all players, but with their current strength it is not possible to get there. Wang Yan thought, why are they telling him this? The Major said that he is the highest level player they know at the moment. 
They hope that if necessary, he will go to the Bone Dragon Abyss. He agreed and thought that the relationship between the military and what was happening remained unclear, so he couldn't let anyone know that it was him who was cool today. Suddenly a rustling was heard in the bushes and a draconian crawled out, Wang Yan asked, as he finished examining the surroundings. Zhu and Zhu confirmed the gentleman's words and the system window reported that one ghost fire had been received. Wang Yan praised him for killing the enemy and the draconian said that his praise was partly for him. Behind those bushes from which Zhu and Zhu crawled out, there was a bloody hand, and next to it lay a phone that recorded Wang Yan's words. At this time in the tunnel, Wang Hai breathlessly told Wang Tao that Ming Yan was missing. Wang Chong said that the tunnel will collapse soon, most likely it is on the surface. Wang Tao said irritably that they were stopping the search, the agreed time was already running out. Suddenly they heard a noise from above and he asked, is it a crowd of monsters on the surface? Let them tell everyone to stay put and not run around. At this time, the orcs performed a ritual. The orc told the great wise orc prophet that he had brought him the most well-fed sacrifice, he was looking forward to his indulgence. He asked him to answer the call and an orc in a dark robe appeared in the center. The chief orc raised his hand to his chest and respectfully greeted the lord. Suddenly the orc in the robe felt something and something fell on top of them. The orc said that the overlord had disappeared. Wang Yan stepped on the head of one of the orcs and said that he sent him back home. The orcs immediately headed towards him and the main orc asked who he was. He replied that he was the one who would take their lives. The orc got angry and said that he had killed the warriors of their tribe and interrupted the ritual. He gave the order to kill him and the orcs immediately attacked him. But instead of Wang Yan, they plunged their weapons into the body of their fellow and asked what it was. Where is the man? Suddenly Wang Yan appeared from the side and hit the main orc. The orc told him not to overestimate himself, but Wang Yan only grinned in response. At the same moment, a draconian appeared behind the orc and wounded him. The chief orc felt severe pain in his hand and screamed. Wang Yan pushed him and told him to look for his hand on the floor. The main orc with a severed hand fell from a cliff and other orcs rushed towards him to catch him. They restlessly called out to their general and Wang Yan, sitting on his throne, said that let them return to their world and never set foot here again. Only then would he spare their lives. The orcs got angry and their general asked the great Abacross to empower his most loyal warriors with mighty power. They will sing the war song of the orcs. Orc war song is a skill in which an orc general sings a war song, increasing the effect of the combat berserker of the orcs under his command. The defense, damage, strength and speed of all orcs increases by 10%. Wang Yan opened the gates of the undead and his loyal warriors emerged from them. He told them to show their strength. His warriors began to fight the orcs while he sat quietly on the throne. The orc general attacked Wang Yan and asked how dare they. But Wang Yan's warriors noticed that he had opened up and struck him with blows. The general said it was unforgivable. How dare he turn the warriors of their tribe into these fallen creatures. The system window reported that he was using the unrestrained beast skill. With this skill, the orc general exhausts his own potential. His body size increases by 30% and his healing abilities by 20%. Increase in strength and speed by 20%, decrease in defensive abilities by 20%. For every 1% of his maximum health loss, his attack power increases by 1%. He grew in size and said that he would smash his skull to pieces. Wang Yan's warriors asked how dare he disrespect their master. The orc general attacked them and one of the warriors told the master that they could not defeat him. Wang Yan looked at them and said that the three of them were losers in life and still are. He thought that the difference in levels was too great, he was scattering most of the troops on his side to the right and left. The orc started chasing the little goblins and asking where they were going. Wang Yan rushed out and thought that after his subordinates he should deal with the king. He attacked the orc and dust rose from the powerful blow. He attacked the general and said that he had powerful fortitude. He plunged the dagger into his stomach and then slashed his arm. One of the orcs shouted to the general that they would help him. The orc threw Wang Yan back and he landed on his feet. Wang Yan looked up and noticed that the general's huge hand almost grabbed his head, but he dodged it and thought it was dangerous. The general asked irritably, did he dodge? Behind him, Wang Yan noticed the spears and threw them at him. The spears flew past the general and he laughingly said that his accuracy was poor. But the spears did not fly at him at all, but at his subordinates. Wang Yan approached him and asked who said that his target was him. He activated the cold poison skill and began to strike numerous times. The general swung his fist and hit Wang Yan, but he grinned and the orc noticed that his blood began to heat up. Before the orc pushed Wang Yan away, he managed to deliver the final fifth blow. The general's body exploded and the draconian asked his master, is it all over? Wang Yan looked at his blade and replied that not yet. The orc general recovered from the explosion and had very little health left. He wanted to use the blood sacrifice skill, with which he would sacrifice his life and increase the characteristics of the orc soldiers by 50%.
but Wang Qian hit him in time and the system window reported that the orc general Anas had been defeated, the orc's war song was ending, and the orc warriors were weakening. He looked at the general's body and thought he was lucky. He managed to finish him off before he used the blood sacrifice, otherwise dealing with the orcs would have been a problem. The full moon appeared from the clouds and the troll laughingly said that the effect had subsided from them. Cyclops called out to his brothers and told them to attack. The system window reported that he had received 51 ghost lights, received 37,188 experience, its level increased to 27. He received a new skill, soul perception, precise cut. The undead gate was successfully transformed, he subjugated 17 undead warriors and received 34 ghostly fire. He received 30 orc teeth, 10 beast armor and 1 ferocious beast blade. He thought that he managed to convert only 17 orcs into undead warriors. The most important thing is that among them there is an orc general and an orc commander, so he is not at a loss. He looked at the radio and saw that it was almost 11 o'clock at night. He needs to clear the battlefield quickly, the appointed time is almost here. He told the draconian Ju and Ju to alert the people in the tunnel and he complied. After a while, in the tunnel, Wang Hai told Wang Tao that Brother Yan had done well. Wang Tao smiled and said that they should all prepare to leave. They began to gather near the plane and the military man told Wang Yan that they needed his help because an unexpected situation had occurred in the Bone Dragon Abyss. He asked, is there an emergency? The military man handed him a tablet and told him to look at it. Wang Yan was surprised and the military man asked if he knew anything about this. He replied that bone spikes appeared outside, indicating that the king was leaving the demon abyss, and the bone king was leaving the poor bone dragon. The military man asked, is he sure? He thought that it was because he had forgotten this information that he had failed to catch the bone king in the past. The military man looked at his wristwatch and said that it would move into place in five minutes, perhaps they would get lucky. After a while they flew up like an abyssal bone dragon in a helicopter. Wang Yan and the military man looked down and the system window said that this was the Nine Purgatories, the Bone Dragon Abyss. At this time, in the depths of the Bone Dragon Abyss dimension, a mysterious man passed by the loyal warriors. He approached the computer and the system window reported that data recovery was completed. The restoration of higher powers from the reverse side was not yet completed. He turned around and told the warriors that the guests had arrived, let them greet them properly in the name of the Bone King Altma. The level 170 Bone Dragon Knight raised his sword and the man ordered to kill them mercilessly. At this time, a plan to penetrate inside was discussed in a military helicopter. Wang Yan told him not to even hope, there is no chance. The Bone King may not be there, but there are a lot of enemies there and their level differences are too big. Suddenly he noticed movement outside the window and saw a Bone Dragon. He shouted that they needed to fly away quickly. The military man pointed a weapon at the monster and said that everything was happening too quickly. He fired a rocket at the Dragon Knight, but he threw the projectiles away from himself and there was an explosion. He raised his sword up and began to attack, after which he swung his sword and cut the helicopter into pieces. Wang Yan and the military began to fall down, but a bone dragon appeared in front of them, which at the same moment inflicted a severe wound on the military man. Immediately after that, he turned his gaze to Wang Yan and he shouted that he was a freak. The dragon attacked him, but he managed to block the blow and began to rapidly fall down. The dragon looked at his flight and decided not to chase him. After a while, there is a refuge in the city. The president of the Dragonbane Flame Guild, Qin Mingxu, was driving his grandfather in a wheelchair and said that he received the news from Lin Jai. They managed to detain everyone except Wang Yan, who escaped. Patriarch, Qin Tian asked, who is outside now? Qin Mingxu replied that only Wang Yan was there. His family is under the protection of the military, but he himself disappeared without a trace a week ago. Qin Tian said that Wang Yan is his younger brother, the living want to meet people, and the dead want to meet the dead. Let him find him, and if he doesn't find him, then let him grab his parents, he will find a way out. Qin Mingxu agreed and his subordinate asked what he would order. Qin Mingxu replied that, of course, the living want to meet people, and the dead want to meet the dead. At this time, in the undead dimension, Wang Yan was lying on the cold ground, but suddenly he suddenly opened his eyes and thought, had he really died? The draconian Zhu and Zhu joyfully said that their master had woken up. Great, the recipe worked. Wang Yan looked at his palm and realized that he was alive. Zhu and Zhu approached him and asked him to take medicine. He handed him a bowl and Wang Yan was horrified, he asked what kind of slop this is. Zhu and Zhu happily said that there were two more freshly prepared portions that he should take hot. Wang Yan thought, two more servings. He asked what happened to him after he passed out. Zhu and Zhu refused to answer and told him to take the medicine first, and then they would talk. Wang Yan waved his hand and said that it was too hot, let him wait a minute. Zhu and Zhu started blowing on the slop and said that when they noticed that he was in danger, they immediately took action. That day he arbitrarily opened the gates of the undead and caught his master. He gave him medicine for a month, and he finally woke up. Wang Yan realized that he had already drunk more than one cup. 
Time passed, he sat on a stone and thought. He can't remember any special dungeons, if only he had paper and pen. Suddenly a flash appeared in front of him, from which paper and a pen appeared. He was surprised and thought, how did this happen? He can he can get whatever he wants in the undead dimension. He shouted that he needed the royal blade, eternal sacrifice artifact. Nothing happened and he thought that, of course, everything couldn't be that simple. He will start with the original plan, he needs equipment that can dramatically increase his strength. He began to write down everything he needed on a piece of paper and thought that he also needed to get the black gold of the dead soul. Forty days have passed since the worldwide gamification, at which time representatives from different countries communicated in the virtual conference room of the World Association. The rooster from country F said that after a whole day of arguing, it was time to share some useful information. The bull from country Y said that currently the population loss of each country is about 80%, the damage to industry is 60%. The villain behind worldwide gamification is Yu Heng from country Z, and he must be held accountable for his actions. Panda from the country asked Z, is he talking about their losses? So maybe they will remember their debt from 1840 and pay the bills. If he can only talk nonsense, then let him keep quiet. They will get down to business. They tried various weapons and could not get close to the Bone Dragon Abyss, where Yu Heng Company is now located. They will be able to clear the nine purgatories only by following his rules. Eagle from Country M said that everything is the same on their side. On the first day, these monsters were still injured from firearms, but literally the next day they already received immunity to firearms. The polar bear from Country E said that their scientists, based on observations, suggest that the existing physical rules were most likely forcibly changed by someone. In this regard, even if they use the Tsar bomb with maximum equivalence, they will not be able to inflict enough damage on the monsters. So-called players cause more damage to monsters, although they use all kinds of knives. Something like this is extremely difficult for human science to explain. The rooster said that now not only does physics defy logic, but, according to their information, so does geographical knowledge. The planet they live on is experiencing the largest geological activity since its inception. The planet began to increase in size. The proof is that their fighter traveled 19,000 kilometers in a straight line, but never reached its original point. The fighter jet had to make an emergency landing at sea because it ran out of fuel, while something more shocking happened. From time to time, their companions have witnessed an attack on them from another planet. Besides this, no matter what method they used, they were unable to obtain any information about that planet. Other than the intervention of the gods, he can no longer find any explanation. The man turned off the television broadcast of the meeting and said that the meeting was held for three days. The most useful information came only from Country F. He asked where the fleet responsible for receiving information from Country F was located. His subordinate said that everything according to the information they provided, the Blue Star has expanded. And now the fleet has no idea where exactly they are. However, right now the three satellites are monitoring in real time, so they don't have to worry about losing contact. The man said that since there is no way out, then let them swim. Now the priority is the distribution of 10 gold mines. His subordinate handed him a folder and told the director that here is the distribution plan. The director called him Zio Zhu and said that in private he could call him boss, he was still not used to hearing this director. Zio Zhu replied that among all the commanders of the military region, he is the only one who is a player, so there is nothing so shameful about calling him director. The director opened the folder and said that all these old people were just used to taking time off from work, if only he didn't play with his grandson. Suddenly he stopped short and noticed something in the plan. He asked if the four great guilds were too greedy if they wanted to rent five mines. Although all players are under their control, the four great guilds have equal power to them. He signed and said that the gold mines produce extremely important metals that are very necessary for the advancement of future players. This is the best plan their staff could come up with. They will give five of them to the four great guilds, another three for players and other small guilds. They will have two mines left at their disposal, they will lack strength. They also need to attract independent players. The youth who went to the Bone Dragon Abyss was the best choice, but what a pity. Zio Zhu said that their actions were too hasty back then. After a while, a lot of people gathered at the Mithril Mine. Wang Hai was chewing a loaf of bread and asked why so many people had gathered for the opening of the Mithril Mine. Wang Tao replied that many of them could compete with them. He enthusiastically said that this was an opportunity to glorify their tyrant guild, and if they took advantage of this, they would be able to surpass the four great guilds. Wang Hai asked him to come to his senses and Wang Chong asked if they could change the name of the guild. Wang Tao said irritably that he spent ten lower magic stones to invite a monk to the guild. Wang Hai and Wang Chong thought that he had definitely been deceived. They called it the derisive nickname of the Taoist monks, Unscrupulous Cow Nose. The Taoist who had previously met Wang Yan sneezed and thought, who missed him so much? He looked around and said that the eighth gold mine was producing mithril. Where can he find the black gold of the dead soul? 
If only that young hero were here, he should know this. The eighth gold mine began to open and people immediately rushed into the portal. At this time, Wang Yan broke through the mine wall and said that it must be here. He opened the eleventh mine of black gold of dead souls and said that he would find it. He entered the first floor into the lair of the wolf miners, after which he looked around and said that this is strange, why has the gatekeeper not shown up yet? He descended deeper into the mine and found himself on the second floor in the underground demon camp. He looked around and said that there was no one on the second floor either. He noticed arrows on the floor and wondered what a bow and arrow was doing here. There should be no archers among the demons. He called his warriors and said that he hoped he was just making it up. At this time, a monster was watching him from around the corner. The monster went deep into the cave and reported to the general that their enemy was a man. Under his command were orcs, trolls and a giant. A demon sat on a stone and read a book, he asked, united troops from different tribes. This is interesting. Let him throw the infantry onto the third floor as bait. The monster obeyed and the demon told him to remember that it was important for them to show the enemy his weakness. After a while, monsters appeared on the floor, but Wang Yan's warriors easily killed them and the draconian said that where did these weaklings come from? They dare to attack them. These weaklings can't even withstand one blow, his teeth fly out from laughing. Wang Yan became wary and thought that something was wrong here, aren't the monsters here so weak? The goblin attacked the monster and Wang Yan thought, they can't even cope with goblins. Suddenly sharp arrows pierced the goblin's body and Wang Yan noticed a monster on the ceiling of the cave. He shouted that it was an ambush and the monster archers began to attack them. The arrows pierced the bodies of the undead warriors and after several such attacks they stopped moving. Wang Yan lay under the body of the cyclops and one of his warriors asked how long they should pretend to be dead. He replied that as soon as the enemy came down, they would be taken by surprise. Suddenly the ground began to shake and he was surprised. He turned his head to the side and saw that a whole cavalry was moving towards them. The monsters mounted the wolves and moved towards them. Seeing this Wang Yan began to run and Zhu and Zhu asked him to wait for him. One of the monsters asked, were they pretending to be dead? They'll catch up with them and finish them off. Wang Yan ran away and thought that the cannon fodder lured the opponents into an ambush with an archer, and then the cavalry came out. Somehow everything went too smoothly for them. After a short chase, Wang Yan managed to hide on the ceiling of the cave. He thought, cannon fodder, archers, cavalry, how much has the local boss evolved? At this time, the monster reported to the general what had happened. The black and gold general of the 35th level asked, did he pretend to be dead and escape? He orders them to cut off the heads of all the dead. The monster obeyed his order and asked if they should send someone else in pursuit. The general replied that this was not necessary, let them strengthen the defenses of the camp, he would return. At this time, in the Mithril Cave, the Tyrant's Guild was dealing with monsters. They got Mithril from monsters and Wang Hai said that they were wild creatures. Wang Chong said that they are moving too fast, nothing will happen. Wang Hai told him not to worry, the boss can't leave the fifth floor, nothing will happen to them on the fourth floor. Suddenly Wang Tao and the Taoists were thrown back and Wang Hai turned around asking what was that. Behind them they saw a level 35 Mithril general. Wang Hai asked how the boss got out of the fifth floor. At this time, Wang Yan approached the monster's camp and noticed that their guards were strong, it would not be easy for them. He told Zhu and Zhu to go and wake up Shiwansui, let him attack them from here. The draconian obeyed his order, and at this time a fake general was sitting in the tent, reading a book. He heard someone shout to grab a weapon and go after him. They will kill the demons and take the treasures. He hid behind the throne and said that he was scared, he couldn't do it, he couldn't cope with the boss's job. A cut appeared in the tent, with the help of which Wang Yan observed this monster. He thought it was good that he decided not to engage in a quick fight. This boss is just a fake monster. He looked around and thought that there was a fake in the tent, but where was the real one? He saw a monster standing in the center and giving orders. The monster told the second squad to go forward and the third squad. But before he could finish speaking, Wang Yan beheaded him and thought, did he succeed? Was the boss really that weak? He did not notice how a real general appeared from the side and attacked him, but he was able to block the blow in time. He gritted his teeth and asked, is this him? That behavior was a sham. The general quoted, if a lie is made true, then it becomes true, the soldier's reasoning. He learned this from their human book. He didn't expect it to be so useful. Wang Yan was surprised and thought, the monster has studied the art of war and now he does not leave people alive. No wonder the army of monsters moved so smoothly. With his words he wants to provoke him. The general said that they would get down to business, let him tell him how he managed to resurrect his soldiers. Wang Yan was surprised and asked how he knew. Instead of answering, the general pierced his shoulder with a sword and asked, did he understand the situation? Let him stop talking nonsense and answer the question, otherwise, not a single sword will pierce it. Wang Yan grunted in pain and the general asked, what is this? Cyclops asked his master to hold out. The general said that he had good subordinates, but they would not help him. 
the skill Undead Battle Song was suddenly activated, in which the Undead General loses almost 10% of his maximum health while performing the Battle Song to increase the madness of the Undead. Defense, damage, strength and speed of all Undead are increased by 10%, and for the Necromancer by 15%. Wang Yan asked, does he want to listen to the song? The General was surprised and Wang Yan began to pull his sword out of his body. He waved his sword and said that it would give him death. He pushed the general and he hit the wall. After that Wang Yan looked at him and the general said that he has not lost yet, let him go to hell. The collapse began and Wang Yan cursed loudly. The general laughed and said that he was the winner. But suddenly he was very surprised and noticed that Wang Yan was caught by his subordinates. One of them asked, is he safe? Wang Yan replied that he was fine and his subordinate handed him his weapon. Wang Yan took the dagger and said that it was time for him to finish. He ran over the skulls that paved the way to the general and attacked him. Blood sprayed from the monster's body and the system window reported that he had received 4470 experience. His level increased to 28 and he received a mysterious gift package, he received classless armor. Wang Yan used life absorption on the dead general and he obeyed him. He said it was great, it worked the first time. He told his new subordinate that he was well versed in the art of war and had a ruthless character. He will do everything possible to win, he can become the new commander in chief of the undead army. He grants him the surname of the immortal soldier, the name of the godslayer Han Baki. Han Baki knelt down and said that he accepted this name with gratitude. The system window reported that he gave the true name to the black and gold general and secured his absolute loyalty. He received the black and gold general skill. Absolute mastery. This skill provides a 5% bonus to the stats of the soldiers under his command based on mastery. At this time Wang Tao and the rest of the guys were fighting the monster. They knocked the monster to its knees and defeated it, after which the system window reported that Wang Tao, Ma Daejun, Wang Hai, Wang Chong from the Tyrant Guild defeated the Mithril General. They sat down on the ground exhausted and said that they had finally finished him off. Wang Chong climbed onto the monster's body and gasped loudly. Wang Tao approached him and asked why he was so angry. Let them collect loot, another group will quickly come here. Wang Chong jumped off the monster's body and said that he needed to take a look at it. He handed him half of the mithril ore and a luxury half mithril token. Wang Tao asked where is the other half. He opened a scroll on which there was an unusual drawing of a bunny and asked what it was. The Taoist looked at the drawing and said that he seemed to know what it was. Wang Tao asked, is he sure? At this time, Wang Yan obtained a luxury black gold dead soul token and 90% black gold dead soul ore. He received half a deluxe token and 45% of the mithril ore. He received a deluxe aquamarine token and 45% of the aquamarine ore. He said that was strange, after that he turned to Han Baki and asked how come they had tokens from other mines. He replied that he was challenging the other ten generals to test the art of war from the book. He easily defeated them and took half of all the tokens, leaving clues for people to come to him for battle. Wang Yan became worried and told everyone to listen to his order, they must mine all the ore before the others get here. He looked at Han Baki and told him to continue doing the prone position. He thought that sometimes being smart is not always for the best. After the unification of the worlds, the monsters began to develop wisdom, and Han Baki learned the art of war. It would be great if he could get inside their head. Perhaps he will be able to enter the wisdom system and understand the reason for the development of these events. It's a pity he does not have a spiritual body. He looked at Zhu and Zhu, who was mining ore, and thought that he did not have a spiritual body, but they did. After a while, Zhu and Zhu looked around the channel of wisdom and asked the master, should he continue to move forward? Wang Yan touched Han Baki's head and told him to continue. Zhu and Zhu reached the wisdom system center and asked, can he see this? Wang Yan replied that he saw it, after which he asked if he could go in there. The system window informed the mysterious man that someone had infiltrated the wisdom system of low-level monsters. He thought about it and said that the instrument has a wisdom system. Lao Lin did a lot of interesting things behind his back. But unfortunately, the instrument does not need wisdom, it is not good to be too smart. He ordered the system to purify the wisdom of all low and mid-level tools, let it only keep it for high-level monsters. The system window reported that execution was starting. At this time, Wang Yan felt pain and the wisdom system began to self-destruct. He told Zhu and Zhu to run quickly. Zhu and Zhu started running and something started chasing him. He looked back and asked what these things were. He came out of Han Baki's head and said that he was back. Wang Yan pulled back from his subordinate and said that it was as if the enemy had noticed the intrusion from his side. What was that green orb that fell out of Zhu and Zhu? His subordinate noticed that he felt bad and asked if he had a headache. He has a cure for it. Wang Yan called out to Shi Wansui and asked what he had become. He replied that he became like this after he ate the black gold of the dead soul. The system window reported that the undead Han Baki of the first level, the undead warrior Zhu and Zhu of the second level, the undead Night Shi Wansui, the coming of evil of the third level. 
a level 4 undead great knight, a level 5 undead knight captain, a level 6 crowned undead knight, and a level 7 undead demon god. Wang Yan was surprised and asked what is this. He saw that they had all become skeletons and asked why they all looked like that. They replied that they, too, became like that after eating the black gold of the dead soul. Wang Yan realized that the undead can evolve after eating the black gold of a dead soul, and there is plenty of that here. He put on armor and ordered everyone to eat black gold. Let them bite off a larger piece and eat at least a hundred black gold. His subordinates began to eat black gold and he said that it was much faster than digging. The information revealed about Han Baki should not spread quickly. The subordinate called out to the master and said that there were people outside. Wang Yan said that they came too quickly. He told them to finish, they already have tokens so they will eat next time. He ran through the cave and thought that Han Baki's armor was quite light, it did not slow down his speed at all. Suddenly he felt something and saw that he had stepped on magic runes. Magic runes appeared around him and he asked what they were. Are these six of the twelve killer magic circles? 